Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. So this episode <laughs> is about a humongous lesson, but I feel like it's going to be a humongous lesson for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm always learning every time I outline these things. Um yeah, so the subtitle to this episode is Unrequited Love. Yeah. And you did not like that title. No, not at all. It made me feel really uncomfortable, actually. Because for me, unrequited love is really all about kind of losing self-respect, losing autonomy, losing control, and, you know, generally being unlovable. Mm -hmm. So it made me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. Because when you hear unrequited love, what do you imagine like what do you picture I mean I I see someone who loves but is unloved Mm. um they they don't get the love back that they want and so it's almost like they become damaged goods Mm -hmm. for not being loved the way in which they want to be loved by the other person yeah um so yeah it just makes me really feel really uncomfortable but you insisted it stayed, even though I tried to convince you to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, you're not you're not going to win those arguments with me. <laughs> <laughs> it is there for mm. a reason. And as we said in the previous episode, we're here to challenge meanings and definitions. Um, with unrequited love, it feels like you're very vulnerable, right? But I guess that in relationships, there's a place for vulnerability, usually. Well, always. If you're not vulnerable, then you're not living honestly. You're not sharing. You're only giving a, the that sort of outside layer of who you are, right? That's, okay, this is who I am. Take that. When, when you're vulnerable, it means you're open. It means that you are emotionally honest. What then is the toxic part when we look at unrequited love? The toxic part is it's lying to yourself about the feelings that are existing or not in that relationship because either you don't love the person as much as they love you Mm -hmm. or they love you more than you love them and for Mm -hmm. whatever reason Mm -hmm. you're whichever party isn't willing to be honest about it well I mean I think I definitely had that experience and I know that a lot of people that I know had that experience as well Mm -hmm. you know um I think a lot of people have mm -hmm. because I think we're dishonest about it we we convince ourselves, we lie to ourselves mm. about our feelings quite mm. frequently. And also feelings can be confusing. <clears throat> you know, I know for me when I was younger, I was in a in kind of a relationship of repeated cycles with someone mm-hmm. where we were friends and then stuff would happen and things would go badly. I'd walk away, I'd walk back to my friend and the cycle would repeat and repeat and repeat. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every time that cycle repeated, it got more and more toxic And why did it get more toxic? In the sense that, you know, every time a cycle happened, Mm -hmm. more damage was done to our relationship. More damage was done to our friendship. And who do you think was doing the most sabotaging there? Probably me. Mm -hmm. If I'm very honest, because I think that... (laughs) I'd hope so. (laughs) Yeah. No, I am. I I think that I was reading, I was projecting my hopes Mm -hmm. rather than looking at reality. Yeah. I would say your hopes, but as much as your expectation... Totally. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, and it's in, it's both on both parts is that I think it gets really complicated when two people love each other, but maybe not in the same way. Mm-hmm. Or two people love each other, but one of them's more prepared to take the risk than the other one. That gets really hard because at what point I had to walk away eventually because it was making me miserable. Mm-hmm. It had damaged our friendship totally. And there wasn't much choice left. Right. Not if you wanted to retain... Any amount of self-respect. Yeah. Yeah. And also because by that point, I mean, every cycle that passes, you're giving up more and more of yourself by going back. Absolutely. So by the time, you know, you're kind of, you hit whatever your rock bottom is, Mm -hmm. there isn't much of yourself left there. Mm -hmm. And so to walk away means not walking away from the expectations, but actually walking towards finding yourself again. Absolutely. And that's really the difference, I Mm -hmm. think. I mean, that was definitely my experience. And that's definitely the experiences that I've that I've seen from other people as well. Oh, absolutely. Revolving to relationships are some mm. of the most common that we have. Yeah. Sometimes it is 
to our benefit yeah. because there is a lesson to learn. And some, if we're not learning it the first time, universe is certainly going to make sure that we have an opportunity to learn it the second and so on until we think, well, even if I haven't learned the lesson, I'm going to have to learn it another way because this one is no fun anymore. So for example, with me, the lesson was to, to choose myself. Absolutely. And until I did that, I was going to keep not choosing myself, basically. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to call it unrequited love anymore. What is the spiritual... <laughs> I still like it. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. But what's the kind of... What's your definition of unrequited love? I mean, I, what, what would you say it, it is? Well, it's when somebody doesn't meet you in the emotional middle. As in, they don't love you as much or to the same degree as you love them. Okay, so they're just... Your, the, the love is unequal. Yes. Well, then if you look at it that way, there's like a fuck ton of unrequited love in the world. So much. And because I find that quite funny, considering that everywhere we go and everything we look at has got the word love in it and it's all about love. Yes, but it's a very immature idea of love. It's a, fa it's a fantasy love. It's the love created from books, from story, from fairy tales, from media. Yeah. It's sort of a capitalist form of love as well yeah it's not real love yeah and by real love i mean the love you have for yourself which is unconditional how long then do you wait for someone to come around how long do you <laughs> wait for someone to meet you at that emotional middle oh wow that's a good question <laughs> so that's a heavy one i think it depends on how much what you have invested already in in terms of how long have you been together? Is there already a foundation of love that exists, but you found yourself sort of in this rather strange dysfunctional pattern because of some trauma, some job loss, et cetera, where you got a bit thrown out? Or was it never there in the first place, but you just had kind of created it in your mind? Yeah. If it's the former, then it's certainly worth trying to come back to it. Yeah. I think it's definitely possible because... People do fall out of love. People yeah. in long-term relationships, partnerships, and marriage, it's not unusual to fall out of love with your partner. Yeah. But when it's when it's a powerful, strong connection that is rooted in love, it comes back yeah. quite immediately when yeah. you just have to remind yourself, oh, wait, yeah, it's there. Yeah. It's there. You know, you sort of dip in. There's that reservoir. Mm. Whereas walking away was the only way to save yourself because... That was the act of love. There was The act of love was not to stay, but it was to go. Oh, that's really interesting. Then if you say the act of love, right, yes. then by walking away, you're no longer unrequited in your love because you're loving yourself. Precisely. So actually the unrequited love mm -hmm. isn't you wanting love from someone else. And so you're staying and sticking around and hoping that they love you. Right. The unrequited love is because you haven't chosen to love yourself enough to walk away. Exactly. I agree with that. Okay. But I also don't. I'm loath to tell people, oh, if you're in a situation where you feel that either you're loved by someone else more than you love them, mm -hmm. or you love more than you're being loved, mm -hmm. the answer is to walk away. Oh, right. No, I mean, it's not always worth it. I think it just, but it takes honesty to figure out with yourself, what is it that I'm not getting? Why is that? And can I tell this person... I need a bit more here to make this work. So because like, often we're just making assumptions. Yeah. So first it's kind of like, okay, I recognize that this is the situation. Mm -hmm. I recognize what I want and or need mm -hmm. in order for this situation to not exist in this way. Exactly. I need to ask for it. Mm -hmm. And once I ask for it, and if I get it, great. Because that's also an act of love because you're standing up for yourself. Yes. But if they're unable to give it to me for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and then the act of love is to walk away. Yes. So actually, it's a series of acts of love. Absolutely. Which then means it's not unrequited love. No. It's just love misplaced. Exactly. And it means choosing yourself. And we're so often told not to put ourselves first. Yeah. But if you don't know how to put yourself first, then you won't ever come first in a relationship. And in a real partnership, both individuals are first. Okay. There's no ranking. There's okay. no hierarchy. Okay. It's harmonious. Okay. Yes, sometimes somebody's needs supersedes their own, the others, if there's something immediate going on. It's not you, me, it's I, thou, as in I honor you as much as I honor myself. Your needs are just as, just as important as my own. Precisely. Okay. Well, I think what you said is really interesting 
because that's not how I've been viewing relationships. Like from a young age, mm -hmm. we're taught love is sacrifice. From, you know, when we look at historically, it's the woman stays at home and cooks and sacrifices her once for a public life in any shape, way or form for the family. That's how she shows love. The man goes out and works and provides for the family. That's how he shows love. Mm -hmm. Love is always measured by sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, love isn't measured by I love you and you, and you love me the same amount as I love me. And we're all loving each other equally and it's already great. It's, <laughs> yeah, no. you know, it's always, it's almost that sexy thing of, you know, I'm trying to think of even a movie scene. Like there's so many where Ugh. he kills himself for her. Endless. You know? Well, those are our like, fairy tales. Yeah, it's all sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, we are conditioned from very young ages yeah. over this rather dysfunctional form of love. Yeah. That these behaviors equate to showing love being love being in love and yet those are some of the worst things that we could ever worst mm. ways to show love well that's why i almost felt comforted when i was doing what i was doing because in a weird fucked up way it was romantic yes you know i am sacrificing myself for you because then when we finally end up together <laughs> exactly. the story will be beautiful precisely because i've done what i've always been told mm -hmm. to do yeah. which is sacrifice yeah. and put you first because that's what a relationship is and then when you wake up you'll come around and this is it's going to have all been worth it exactly yeah even now I notice that when I'm interacting with men or hearing stories from other friends and everything else, it's almost like he did this for me. I yeah. did this for him. Mm -hmm. It's like love is defined by acts of service, not equality, not harmony. Right. If we say relationships are a mirror, mm -hmm. which we'll go on to talk about more in episodes in the future. Mm -hmm. And if we say that your needs are just as important to me as my own. Yes. Right. And I have a huge degree of self-love. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. You have a huge degree of self-love. So you're attracting a partner who has a huge degree of self-love. Very much. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're loving you as much as they love themselves, which is a fuck ton. Mm -hmm. You're loving them as much as you love yourself, which is a fuck ton. Yes. <laughs> which means that actually that is the basis mm -hmm. of a really healthy relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and you will be attracting the relationship actually that you want. Mm hmm when you love yourself as much as you can love someone else. Yes. When I'm when I'm making choices mm -hmm. that pertain to the other person, yes. to our relationship, and to myself that is in my best interest, mm -hmm. and their best interest equally, yes. what happens is I never feel like I'm giving away too much of myself. Right. And that's compromise. Yeah. That's and, not sacrifice. Um, and what that means is that I, n I don't resent Mm -hmm. I'm not angry. I'm not bringing negative feelings into that. Yeah. Is that look at what I've done for you. Mm -hmm. Tip for tat. You have to do this now for me. Yeah. Because what I noticed in my experience was mm -hmm. I was so busy sacrificing the big parts of myself mm -hmm. that I was looking from the other person to give me more than they were capable of in other ways. Yeah. So, for example, we would have arguments over tiny things because I wasn't getting the big things. Right. You know what I mean? But I was looking for those expressions of love right. because I wasn't getting them in other ways. Yeah. I gave you this, so you must give me more. Or you must give me the same. It stops being, yes. we're not counting anymore. It's not transactional. No. No. It's just a connection. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being with somebody that I thought could be it. I don't know if he loved me as much as I loved him. I think it was just two very damaged individuals who just sought solace in each other's company. Mm. Yeah, and he didn't, it's not that he even treated me poorly. It was all this projecting I was doing. Mm. And that was sort of keeping him mm. there because he felt, because mm. he didn't want to leave. Well, that's what's interesting, isn't it? Because we're taught that love is suffering. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. The ones that make me suffer, the ones that make us suffer are the ones that we somehow think hold the potential for real love. Yes. But I was the one suffering. Yeah. And it did wake me up to the fact that, yes, there are some people who come into our lives who are certainly meant to teach us something. And those are our soulmates. Completely. So when I came to tell you about all this stuff, like yes. obviously when we had our first session together, you told me, me and this person had had a contract. Yes. What is a contract? A contract. Well, before we come into our human body, before we're incarnated, our souls make contracts. Okay for a variety of relationships. Okay. Likely with people we've known in previous lifetimes. Okay. And sometimes those have might might have been lifetimes of struggle. Mm -hmm. And so we want 
a do over in this lifetime. We need to heal something, a trauma. So, you know, protect, we'll, we'll choose the parents that we have. We choose the siblings we have. We choose a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we choose everything at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And, um, and often these relationships are meant to bring healing. Can a contract not be fulfilled? Oh, absolutely. Because free will exists. So your will cannot supersede the will of another. Okay. So if a person doesn't want to honor that contract, they don't have to. Okay. And you can just move on to another one. And we're making contracts throughout our lives. So yeah. we're not sort of stuck with the ones that we we made before we were incarnated. Because if we yeah. were, that would yeah. be rather unfortunate. Yeah. We get to exercise our own will. So can that can that be then the same feeling that you'd have an unrequited love where we you actually had a contract with this person, but it just wasn't fulfilled? Right. We take this stuff personally, don't we? Yeah. We think that it's it's all about us because when yeah. we're sort of in the vacuum of that relationship, yeah. it always begins and ends with us, which in many ways is true. But when it's up to the choice of another, you can't always control that. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why it feels like, oh, this person's meant to be my soulmate. Why aren't we together? Yeah. Absolutely. But in fact, they could be a soulmate, just not the way in which you think they're going to be your soulmate. Not the forever kind. I see. Okay. And sometimes, because we're so willing, we're so open when yeah. we're in love. And sometimes that's when the lessons, I mean, that's when the lessons most penetrate. Okay. And that's when we can learn them. So sometimes we get confused. I mean, we, we say we learn best from love. Yeah. And that's why sometimes when we hurt, we think... Well, love is pain. Yeah. Because we've learned to equate that. Okay. But at the end of the day, the lesson isn't always, well, I was meant to be with this person forever. I was meant to love this person so I can learn this particular lesson for myself. Okay. And then move on. Okay. That's not what we're always advocating, right? Oh, no. Not at all. Because sometimes the right decision is to run into the fire and actually learn the lesson. Well, it's certainly a decision. Certainly not into right or wrong anything. For those of us, like you and I, we learn best that way. Mm. And so I'd much rather love as many people as I need to learn the lessons than to just presume that I know everything. For instance, for myself, yeah. with this person, yeah. we were never meant for more than what we had. It was more about reminding me that I wasn't loving myself. And what's funny, actually, is that what you're talking about contracts, even if you don't believe in contracts, mm-hmm. you can still, you see it echoed in reality, right? Mm-hmm. I believe that I'm, I love you and there's something more here, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And because I believe that love is sacrifice, I have to sacrifice more of myself mm-hmm. to make it work. Yeah. But because free will cannot supersede my will, mm-hmm. if you don't want to be with me, mm-hmm. or if you don't want more from this than you're giving me, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get any more, regardless of how much I sacrifice myself. Precisely. And therefore, what I'm left with is a situation where you don't love me, I don't love me, <laughs> There's no love anywhere. No. So I'm failing to love myself, mm-hmm. right? And that's the kind of the, the shadow of unrequited love. Yes. That, but I don't like that word failure. Because... Neither do I. We're never failing. We're just needing more lessons. We're always in the process of learning something. We are all a work in progress. And we're all just doing the best we can. Always. If you're listening to this and you're in a situation, as we've described, mm-hmm. it's kind of forgive yourself for whatever stage of that cycle you're at, really. Yes, absolutely. And yes, there's the opportunity to choose to love yourself, mm-hmm. to either ask for what you want mm-hmm. or to walk away if you're not getting what you want. Yes, because I think some people do feel that they've equated compromise with sacrifice. Okay. And that's what I find extremely problematic in certain relationships where the person recognizes a need to walk away yeah but keeps believing that a simple sacrifice is really the way through but it's not yeah totally when i chose myself when i walked away when i started loving myself it gave me the confidence to love myself more Mm -hmm. so that now many years on not only can i be friends with this person but i can also trust that whatever situation i'm flung into I will make a choice that honors who I am. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to do a lot more things and have more adventures than I would otherwise because just as much as you have to have the courage to jump into those things is you have to have the courage to walk away from them when they stop working. Being in a situation of unequal love requires the most courage to walk away because we've been taught so long that that's the foundation of love. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to choose yourself over societal's view of what love should be, Mm -hmm. then in the future you can trust yourself to do a whole buttload of other stuff too the biggest lie we've always told ourselves is that we can we a 
we can make someone else love us and B, we know what someone else is thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So you never know if someone loves you, really. The only person, the only love you can really know, Mm -hmm. the only head you can really be in is in your own. Absolutely. And then there is no unrequited love because in loving yourself, you're always loved. And that's kind of what we've been looking for, really. And at the beginning of this podcast, when I was saying, oh, I don't want to be... You know, unrequited love is the person that's loved by no one. Well, that can't exist if you're loving yourself because you're always loved by someone then. Absolutely. Which is eternal and unconditional. Yeah. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.